just give this a moment to connect and when it's connected we'll get going for you then okay so that's this now streaming so we just start off right okay uh, yep to answer J J Dre's there is quick question at the bottom there this is going to go live on my Facebook feed now afterwards I will be as everybody knows I will be downloading this and I'm going to make sure it goes up onto the Speakeasy page probably tomorrow and all all of Avon Media I'm going to put it to YouTube as well and I will send links out when we've got it okay right okay poetry wise now and I see Anto Antonia let me know later if you want to read as well okay so I wasn't expecting a lot tonight so okay right the first poem I'm going to do now there's a Scottish poet knocking around at the moment called Finn Hall a few of you may or may not know him it's a lovely lovely book um, he's got a project on the, at the moment going on called Joined Up Writing. And it's quite an interesting project where he basically gives you a line from a point or like stanza somebody else has just completed him. And you are given that line to then carry on to write another stanza on it. And your last line then carry, goes past on to somebody else to carry on that this massive poem that's going on for about 200 odd people. So I'm going to read that now if you're a bit I, I think it stands up as a, a poem as well. And unfortunately, somebody here had to then carry that on with the last line. So <laughs> you enjoyed that, didn't you? So yeah, no, I think you enjoyed it. So this is called Facing the Void. A glass half empty can still of swish, clenching our emotions together, fermenting of everything said before, looking at the void across open ground with our past buried over a postscript. Catching our love off guard, leaving us both none the wiser, whether hiding behind an apple tree or facing the mountain. Right, that's done there for the first piece. The other piece I'm going to do is a couple of you know as well. I'm also in the middle of writing a book at the minute on imaginary letters between a couple, and a lot of it seems to be able to travel over England, having all kinds of adventures. And this one is up in an area called Fluckborough Beach, which is, if you know your geography, it's just above Morecambe Way. So, there, and there is a cameo in it as well by the 60s and 70s folk singer Nick Drake, who I love. So this is called Sleep on Fluckborough Beach with Nick Drake. Ricocheting all the way back out from Morecambe Beach, do you remember, Sarah, why you went to Fluckborough in Eric? instead of going back to Manchester. In hindsight, it was funny when we went past Oxham home, but quite a completely wrong way, you said to me, and we both decided to go to Flutborough for another night before heading home. Do you remember the high bullet cloud on the edge of the coastline, all that evening after tea, and four glasses of wine, like a postcard from another time, and Nick Drake's three hours ringing in our ears? and the gulls flying off the coastline into the deep sunset in the distance, leaving us both too tired to look at each other, right up to when the policeman woke us both up at the crisp of dawn, shifting us along in silence with the start of the rain, laughing over our mistake, clutched in silence all the way back to the car, moored in the jetty early morning fog, and our worries hung like a strand of cotton, on the edge of a blade in a deep love, right before everything went wrong. Cheers, guys. Right, okay. As we said before then, so the next person up is our dear friend, Dre Zaya. Go for it, mate. Hello and happy new year to all of us, or is it a really happy new year? I don't know. <laughs> but I am happy to be at Speak Easy for another year. We're all together, talking our words, talking our poetry. And I have got two poems for you. The first one is titled Rad. I fell off my skateboard and got the most badass bruise on my left knee. It's kind of rad. If you don't fall off your ball from time to time, then you haven't breathed that rolling life. 
Because it teaches you to descend and crash safely. It doesn't matter if you could do an ollie, kick flick like a boss or 180. Because rolling with it is kind of rad. No matter the bruises and cuts and falls, it's how we back up and ride what we love. Popping and bearing, snapping that cat back, kick back and glide, win and blissful motion. I should really check on that bruise before riding on that concrete again, but still, it's kind of rad. And so the second poem, thank you very much, thank you. The second poem is all about frequency. And I feel that frequency is very important because I feel that there are many people that we can have in our lives, but I feel that there's not many of them that can really bounce on our frequency. And it goes like this. When I say who can vibe with me, I don't mean who's my best friend or who's my family, but who can D in my frequency? Someone that understands me right to my core, someone that will shut away from me like I'm a nuisance, a tragic eyesore, unsure how to deal with me at the best of times. Discarding, folding me brittle at the worst anytime. I'm not crying, whoa, it's me. Rather be happy in my zone than be infiltrated, contaminated in lovers' toxicity. Static signals tend to screech and claw all over, gnawing your sanity to turn tides to murder. The murder of openness. The idea of being your own radio station strains low ratings, but nobody wants to tune in. No one wants to hear your shit. When you leave your main bandwidth of airwaves, you know it's time to leave before enslaved. A slave to the system that you're forced in living in this channel or this channel until you become electrified, zombified into a brainwashed heap of scrap crap worth not a dime. Because being in someone else's frequency and channel turns to nothingness if you've forgotten your own waves. I'd rather stay in my own island, thank you. That way, at least the music isn't shit. Thank you very much, everybody. My name is Dre Zero. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I look forward to being in Speakeasy for the rest of 2021. And I shall Zero later. Goodbye. <laughs> Brilliant, Duma. As always, mate. Always a pleasure having you on, mate. So, Crazy I don't know who Uma is. Of course, of course, Dre. Who is Uma? You tell us. I'll let you elaborate later on, maybe. <laughs> okay. Pleasure having us always, mate. Okay, dokie, everybody. Nice. Moving right on. Right. Well, we should have had special K on next, but she's not here, so we'll move on. So, she might see her later on. Now, next one, there's not another gentleman. There's this gentleman I've known for about like five, six years now, and he's a regular over at uh, another night, me in the Mandeville in Stockport, called right up on Stockport. Great group, really. It's, it's a pleasure having this gentleman on tonight. He's a fantastic writer. And he's also an Andy, so I, that's always good, always winning in my mind. That. So, everybody, make him feel welcome for his speakeasy debut, Andy Cash. Oh, thanks, you guys. <clears throat> right, I thought that. Um... The main poem I do tonight is one. Actually, it was, I was inspired by Amanda to submit this to the BBC. And uh, incredibly, they uh, agreed to uh, air it on the radio. And uh, purely inspired by Amanda doing it, who is uh, one of my favorite poets because of just the way she delivers things. Uh, it's just amazing. But uh, so, but this poem is about what. Uh, me, Andy, Amanda, our, our group that we've, and, and Andy has been part of that group, God knows for how long, 10 years, but uh, it's, 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 it's really about that group and uh, what we call a call to arms, but I think it's relevant today, a call to arms on poets around the lockdown, because here we are all today, and it, it's literally about what we are doing now, so I hope you appreciate it. It's called uh, All the Poets Unite. 
Another lockdown, but not in the mind. As we scramble to desks, pens and arms to fight against you, to take the viral demon down in veins, hearts, deep into the lacquered lungs. For the dirt in the air, the filth some smoked, the food binged, bodies abused, but survived. Dreams removed by the market efficiency, but the poets unite in the darkest living hours. The words, their worlds collide, composites, brilliantly crafted to take back what is ours, freedom valued, but now traded for longer lives in this town, within a town, in the hall of halls. Those thoughts, the beacon of the beautiful, the flowering in the tormented text voiced, our own people, the creation of the community from coffee houses, massed choirs to church wards. The script is written again in the same year. My fellow ship flies, soaring above to take aim, braving the mental illness of mankind's death. A few with a viral fever cannot win this war. She talks to the screen of windows, into life. Dorina is framed in her own downstairs room with family free to play in the background bit part. Her pen of courage is mighty for Stockport town. Her life everlasting pitched in memories, the marvelous mindfulness of her soft voice lifts those words of wisdom from the page and all is bright in this second lockdown wave. And I don't apologize. I know it's now the third lockdown wave. Um, so you can realize we wrote that and uh, me, Andy, Amanda, we had um, a series of Zoom calls and thought that was our second and final lockdown wave. And here we are again. Um, if Andy, I've got another shorter one if you want me to, to run on that one. Go for it, Mike. Yeah. Um, so let me, uh, yeah, I've got one here. Um, shall run through and uh, about a friend of mine, actually, uh, who's sat on her own now at the moment. I know living in a flat on her own with her dogs and she's a dog walker, just to give you a bit of a background to what this is about, uh, though she has two degrees, would you believe it or not? Her aging hair was swept back to tie too tightly together, controlled and combed, but not tamed by anyone. Other hairs on the fizzy jacket came from a canine family friends, not flaunted is all too much, so essentially more. Her prim proper dress hides what I already know, soft blonde skins scented with a familiar smell that now roams around the air as I breathe back in. Seduction of the senses that weakened me once again. The perfection of memories calling me back to them, asking me to consider the what if only life to be changed. Our plan ahead is why she haunts my mind. Fading blue in those eyes that seem to cry over kindness. Time and luck have left me lost in this guilt and desire. She is hurting inside, I know from those fading eyes. Companionship is all this woman needs to find. Brave faced and new boots laced, but hidden solemn sensual signs 
I know her home is where the true tender thoughts lie. Her primrose scent masking the mess of many months, piling high across those stinking surfaces no longer cleaned. The grim grime of the trodden mind left to rot in that home. Each other day, a harsh repeating of the dog's magical friend, driving in the battered, clattering white van again, muck on rust. The van has all that simple love inside. Many eyes are waiting the freedom of a city park life. Her friends will be waiting, loyal at the door for the keys to turn. Just sat there until she returns to their faithful love. Pots and plates, so soiled, can wait for another day. A mother and soul with lost lovers no longer in drunken tow. Cheers, Andy. Wonderful stuff there. <laughs> now, thank you again, mate. Now, I'm not going to, Amanda won't say it, but you've made a blush before for that. So I'll comment, comment about it over one of your favourite writers. I know I've made a day in that one. So, <laughs> but cheers for that, mate. All right. Okay. Yeah, moving on then. All right. Next one up, we've got a regular over at Speakeasy. And I'm due to do, do a spoken label session with this lady as well, actually, on the weekend. So I'm looking forward to this. Always, always entertaining. One of, one of my favourite writers, Penny Sharman. Thanks, Andy. You're very kind. <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, I think I'm going to do a couple of really sentimental poems tonight, so bear with me. Uh, first one's about my mum. Uh, going back a few years here. Can you hear me everyone? Yeah. So, um, in the kitchen, 1955. My mum makes cupcakes. She's learnt how to blend sugar and butter with a wooden spoon, the patience and wrist movements. She knows nothing about sex. She just lies quite still. My mum regards the method of folding in white self-raising flour as an art to be done slowly, one spoonful at a time. She's forgotten her young life in Calcutta, her rainbow colours, hot skin and monsoon ways. She remembers to mix in the currants and sultanas and waits for the dropping consistency. She only half fills the baking cups. She knows little of cuddling or spooning between starched sheets. She does as she's told. She tells me about hand-picking bananas in her childhood gardens, about wild monkeys. She always lets me lick the bowl with my fingers. She knows nothing about orgasms. She just breathes in and out. She's a follower of Mrs. Beaton. Mum kisses me goodnight, lets me leave a nightlight on. My mum makes perfect cupcakes. <laughs> That's number one. So I better do one about my dad, hadn't I? <laughs> okay, here's another sentimental one. Dad without mum, down the garden, Whiteham Village, 2013. When I was young, I often saw dad sitting at the table with a pile of envelopes. He soaked the stamps in a saucer of water, picked each one up with tweezers and placed them in the Republic of Congo or Swaziland, all over the world with his patient hands. These days, he's straight down to the bonfire after toast and marmalade and two cups of tea. It's constant, his raking of dry leaves, breaking dead wood, 
hard labour that piles up sadness. A white handkerchief waits in his cardigan pocket. It knows the feel of his hand when he reaches in for something to comfort his wilderness of alone. Flames, orange, red, sour, almost purple, rise up over his head. A history of days up in smoke. Kids leaving, love saying goodbye for the last time. He scratches his ears, pulls up more rhubarb. He talks to mallards and coots as a kingfisher flashes along the sea court. Through heavy gloves he senses heat from the dying ashes, his sobbing uncontrollable. From the corner of his eye he sees a vixen under old apple trees stretching out in yellow sunshine. Something mellow enters his heart. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Wonderful stuff from Penny. I always love the little details you have in your pieces. That's one of the great to hear. So thank you for that as always. <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I thought that was amazing and uh, really reminded me of Ted Hughes as one of my favourite poets. The use of, uh, you know, the, the animal bringing in personifications coming in. I thought that was absolutely outstanding. How yeah. kind! <laughs> it's it's very I know. Well, it was very perfect. Right. 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 Okay. okay, we're moving on to another lady now that I've known for quite some time as well. And she's also a fantastic writer, but all, all right, everyone's fantastic at speakeasy, so we know that by now. <laughs> now, this, was, this is a fantastic lady. I'm not sure whether she's actually in the Netherlands at the moment or she's back in Manchester. Oh, Kima, would you like to tell everybody where you are at the moment? I'm not yeah. sure you <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Oh, uh, I came back to Manchester uh, end of September and um, I won't be able to go to the Netherlands for a while, um, even though I have a Dutch passport because it's essential travel only. Um, my family would have to be dead or dying, I think. Otherwise, I think they will turn me back at the border. <laughs> but um, I'm comfortable here and I got a lot of books. So I thought I'd start with a seasonal uh, poem. Um, and it's from the pamphlet. I'll um, feel if you know that uh, uh, that came out, a stolen hour, beginning of the year. And it's one of, after one of those Flemish uh, winter scenes. Um, so set somewhere around 1600, winter scene. It's nine in the morning, Saturday. A pale yellow sun lights up our village. I hear boys laughter. They are going fishing on the freezing river. A yelping dog runs with them. I do not want to think of him. Now I do all his work in the tavern. My neighbor Anna is crossing herself as she enters the churchyard. This is the winter the ale freezes in the barrel. The winter frozen crows will fall from the sky. And um, I'm, I've been reading um, um, Death of the Poet, which is uh, Michael Farley and, uh, sorry, Michael Simmons Robbins, Paul Farley, really sort of interesting. And um, there's a quote in this poem, uh, it's uh, quite new, which is by Frank O'Hara. So I've called the poem, Don't Be Bored. I read how Frank O'Hara was seriously injured by a beach buggy, a metal jeep driven at speed. On a film, he said, don't be bored, don't be lazy, don't be trivial, and don't be proud. First treat of the day, pressed coffee in a modest black cafetiere. 
the only coffee of my day, served in a fine bone china mug lavender. Margaret Loxton must have painted this in France. The women with white scarves, the men closest to me bending down a black beret. I can make out a moustache. Emma bought me that mug to replace the one she broke. She had been a nun, was now studying at uni to become a nurse. Ex-nurse Lucy was doing an MA in garden and urban design. They and Foggy, Lucy's dim white cat, shared for three years at Norwood Road. I only ever drink coffee from that mug. Thank you. Fantastic, Paul Kima. Always a pleasure hearing from yourself. You've got such a rich depth, depth language. It's always fantastic to hear from you. I always love your work. Okay, we're moving on now. We're moving on to somebody that's a newcomer who speak easy. And it's the first time I've actually seen this young lady read, actually, in person. So it's a pleasure because I came across her recently on a night running Ashton, actually, called Spoke of Passions. And what they, that gentleman run that night, he's doing, he's doing it all, getting people to put videos onto his wall. And this young lady is from Hatcham Hazel Grove, actually. I came across her work on there, I thought I really, really enjoyed it. Dropped her a message and we've been chatting on and off since, so it's a pleasure to have her with us tonight. So thank you, Bill, welcome. I think this is their first live Zoom poetry reading, Rosie Lawson. Hello everyone. Um, yeah, it's my first time reading at um, like a like a live night as it is. Um, I am quite nervous, so go easy on me. Because um, not only is it my first time here, it's only the second time I've ever shared my poetry. So um, I am quite nervous. So um, this first one is called Ascension, and um, it's about. How, it's quite reflective and it's about how my own relationship with my body has changed over the past year um, and how I've grown inside and out. So I'll read that one for you now. I trace my scars with a fingertip, their pain a distant memory. Thin lines running through my body like cracks in a china cup. Stretch marks announce themselves on my arms and hips like threads in the rich woven tapestry of my body's growth. I look upon the freckles on my skin like a stargazer studying constellations in the clear night sky, the veins beneath running through my body like rivers flowing to the sea. They say a picture paints a thousand words and my body had been a torn canvas. My hands touch my stomach, my arms, my thighs. I remember the wasted hatred I poured upon you, thick and inescapable like quicksand, as I clawed my way through to embrace you. My body is a vessel, a longship, taking me places I never thought I'd go, showing me things I never thought I'd see, and for that I am truly grateful. Yet I am so much more than my bodily chrysalis. Somewhere deep inside the flesh, I was in there, existing, quietly, patiently, waiting for the roar of my being to burst from these confines of loathing like a butterfly, like glimmering stars cutting through the darkness, not afraid to shine, like sunbeams splitting the clouds of a hazy summer, casting light over the wheat fields. And like a sunflower in the shadows, I turned to face the light. I let its warmth wash over me like waves, acceptance engulfing the shore of my disdain. My body sighed with relief and whispered, I have waited for this day. I glittered, tall flames danced in my eyes, my ignited spirit flickered within. The storm of contempt that had raged against my structure was gone, replaced with the burning embers of love from which I emerge a goddess, glinting in the wildfire of my soul, a smile on my lips as I whisper breathlessly to myself, I love you. They say a picture paints a thousand words and I am a masterpiece. So that was my first one. Thank you very much. Um, my second one has, is, is of a similar theme, um, but it's a bit shorter. Um, it's more about while I was in a, in a period of sort of disliking myself, um, about embellishing myself and why I might do that. Um, so it's called stained glass. 
I am brightly painted. Brush strokes created an intricate watercolor of peonies in bloom across my shoulders. I am illustrated like a picture book, a journey of images I've made permanent documenting my inner thoughts. I am decorated. Peacock feathers and roses make their way from my toes, stretching upwards towards the sky. My form is adorned with jewels. There are sapphires on my fingers, silver circling my toes. Ornaments drip from my ears, a pretty cascade of twinkling gems, and my neck is gilded with gold. My wrists are heavy with trinkets, bangles jingle as I walk. My lips are tinted a deep red, and my eyes are rimmed a smudged black. I wear flowers in my wavy hair, a crown. I am a queen, and my body is my dominion. But why do I embellish so? My body is a place of worship, a temple. It's just mine has stained glass windows and the sun shines upon them and the rainbow dances in the light, a kaleidoscope of colours. I sit quietly at peace and I pray for my own acceptance. Wonderful stuff, Rosie. It's a pleasure having you on there tonight. I don't Thank know you. if you've seen it. Look at all the comments on the chat box there, the foot below. There's I haven't quite... seen them yet, um, but I'll have a look. Um, thank you so much for, every, for listening, everybody, and for welcoming me here today. Thank you again, Rose. It's been a pleasure having you on today. So, right, okay. We're moving over to Wales now, and there's another fantastic writer in there. And this lady has been, been a good friend to me and Amanda with writing wise the past year or two. And we met her through, I met this lady through Bella Kenyon over at Flying the Wall Press Club oh, about two years ago now. And I remember it. Do you remember Amanda the first time? Juliet came down to join us. Oh. Yeah, now I'm making a blush now, but the first time Juliet came down here was um, she ended up talking over the husband about four hours to get down to Manchester. I remember it well, because she got to, they had one of those nights where the traffic was just absolutely appalling. And I never actually asked how long it took to get back, so I was suspecting it was a long night. But anyway, anyway, seriously, she's a fantastic writer, Juliet. Hi, thanks so much. It's so good to be here with everybody. Um, for the new year. Good way to start. Um, this first poem that I'm going to read for you, I'll just give you a trigger warning because it references trauma, but nothing uh, graphic. Bloom. American beauties push scent through the picked edge of curtains. Blue and white checks flagged in your kitchen window, breathing relief of cool night in the summer Bronx. Down on that corner, of the street name I can't remember. Feel of fingertips squishing me like dough. Feel of mind jettisoned from body. Sound of the catch in your snore. Sound of my heart collapsing, expanding, collapsing, expanding. Sound of my lug soles kissing the hardwood. Sound of the click of the front door the thud of fear on every step. Sound of the subway whooshing beneath grates. Sound of the disembodied voice. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. I notice every shoe on the train, running, dancing, flexing, glittered, shiny, torn. Fingertip tracing the cracks of a Broadway sidewalk and waking to a Carnegie sunrise. Breaking your face into a Fibonacci sequence until it is shadow, line, planes, and pores. A turpentine bleed, gessoed clean. I paint every petal in that garden. Smell perfume, tumbled in dirt bathe in sun-kissed water rushing over rocks, sketch ferns brushing bluebell cheeks, smile at the snick of fox feet on the trail. Every beautiful thing crowds into the wildflower field of me and the roses you never planted bloom. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So um, I'll leave you with the short one that's not so serious. <laughs> it's an after poem and it's after, um, this is just to say by William Collars Williams. So probably most of you know that. <laughs> and it's called A Prescription. 
Take the plums from the icebox. Do not ask permission. Bite, chew, swallow. Repeat three times. Cradle the last tenth on your tongue before swallowing it whole. Leave a note. Say you're sorry to no one. Demand forgiveness. Just leave. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me tonight. Fantastic, Judy. It's always a pleasure having you on board there. So thank you again for that tonight. Uh, okay. Last one for the first half is going to be, it makes sense how this gentleman always on the last, because he always tends, makes me smile at the end of it. So one of my favourite writers again, and he's always been a great friend for many years now, Gordon Zola. Hello. Everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, I'm the warm-up act for the break. So I've got two offerings tonight, uh, both completely different. And the first is uh, about a dream catcher that I've got hanging over the bed. And uh, funnily enough, it's called dream catcher. Head sinks into the pillow. Eyelids heavy with the day. Flutter, then fall like a velvet curtain. And you start to drift like a solitary leaf on a summer breeze. The wind whispers your name. You're soaring through the sky on eagles' wings, wings even, yeah. Your spirit thunders across the plains with the buffalo. You ride with the Sioux, dance with the Cheyenne, and hunt with the Iroquois, and you drift. You're drawn to the drums, you skirt around the myriads of teepees, glimpsing welcome faces reflected in the flames of the fire, and you start to drift. The sacred smoke from the sweat lodge seduces your senses, courses through your body, and you start to drift. Drift through sleep's golden gate on a sea of dreams. Night's, dream and, night's demons cannot hurt you. They're trapped like flies in the dream catcher's web, where they're held till the first light of day, where they crumble to dust. Thank you. Okay, something completely different. Uh, I was brought up on uh, musicals, no food, just musicals. And uh, one of my parents' favorite musicals was uh, My Fair Lady. And uh, in My Fair Lady, there's a song called uh, Once It Be Lovely. Now it's sang in a, a Cockney voice, but I'm not gonna sing it in a Cockney voice because uh, my Cockney voice makes Dick Van Dyke sound like Danny Dyer. So, uh, this is, I've, I wrote this a few years ago, but I've updated it for 2021, so it's more relevant now, hopefully. <clears throat> so, uh, feel free to join in if you want. I don't know what it'll sound like in Zoom, but <clears throat> you can join in with the ones it'd be lovely bit. Okay. <clears throat> All I want is a world that's fair to wake up from this COVID nightmare and the Tories to care a word and be lovely lots of laughter and no deceit a blackbird showing Donald Trump how to tweet and pretty Patel to lose her seat a word and be lovely, oh, so lovely, knowing that I've got free will, knowing happiness comes from the heart and not from a government bill. All I want is a world without war, to not be in lockdown forevermore. 
And will peace not marshal our own word and take the lovely of life? One is to stay alive. The chance of doing one more gig live and the universe to survive a word and take the lovely. Lovely, lovely. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Woo! Fantastic. It's always great hearing that one, Mr. Z. I know it's I, you're. I, I've got. I've heard I, I've, I've a few times over the years that one, and it's a great one because it's a great way to finish the second and the first half off. And also, I've got the topical slight references update sound, so also it's brilliant. Thank you again, mate. Right. Well, that's the end of the first half, guys and girls. So we're going to take a 10, 15 minute break. I'll put on the chat column, if you keep an eye on it, what I've got as a rough running order of the second half. If anyone wants to swap anything round, PM me, okay? And we'll sort it out in that when I come back, okay? See you in a few minutes. Yeah. <clears throat> First half is done. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you all so much. I loved it. Been, it's been fun, isn't it? Yeah. How long is the break normally? Just a few minutes, is uh, it? 10 to 15 minutes is what Andy said. Oh, okay. I didn't catch that. Thanks. See you all in a bit. It's all, it's all right. It's all right. I just wanted to quote Andy into it so that I don't get shot down, innit? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody that's shared so far. I've been enjoying myself so much. I will see Rock you later. Rocking it up. Oh man, you know what's mad? So I was looking on my Facebook memories, right? And today, five years ago, I did poetry for the first time as some guy not known as Drazy, or probably my actual name. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was mad. It was mad. I back in those days, um, I didn't have any. I didn't have like. I, I didn't have my own book or anything. I just had this thing called a mobile phone to read from back in those days. It's mad. <laughs> I think I'm where you were then. Like I'm literally like I've got I wrote my poems on my notes in my phone and like uh, that's where uh, I'm at. I mean the, 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 the magic of like the magic of like being in front of a screen is like it's all it can be all like smoke and mirror kind of stuff because um I I still have a problem of memorizing a lot of my poems. So so basically, right? So I recorded myself my own my own poetry, my own poetry bit on this high quality camera device here on a tripod but my poetry reading the my poem words were actually on this laptop screen that my camera is showing so when i was performing mm. i actually had the poems like in front of me reading it from yeah because um because unlike uh, for some reason i still don't have glasses even though my parents and my younger sister does so i can read from a far distance so yeah it's um yeah uh you are definitely I think everyone will agree that you performed very very well you're far more competent than I was on my second time <laughs> I was just a, I was literally an I was just a nervous sack of lasagna when I performed I like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a lasagna on the inside for sure Mm, mm, mm. I loved how you use uh, my uh, my idiolect into like what I get I exactly know what you mean yes <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah, but no, you were very good. I was very impressed with your flow and your and your use of words. I was really impressed. Oh, thank you, thank you. It means a lot because, like I say, I, I, before now I'd never had the confidence to sort of share, and that's sort of changed recently. And um, I want to kind of get out there. So yeah. If you don't mind me asking, Rosie, what changed it for you? What what was that? What was that? Either that push or that Eureka moment that decided for you that I wanted to share poetry because poetry is a very personal thing so and not yeah. a lot of people share their own stuff so yeah tell us why well I share lots of other creative projects like I, I run a small business as an artist and stuff as well like I, like I do drawing and painting and, and things an Etsy store, um, right? I, I, I did I did send you a I did a, yeah I, it was on the, an Etsy isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah um and I've always shared other creative projects, but poetry always felt more personal. 
Mm-hmm. Um, like you say, it's more it's more more from from the heart, I think, and, and inside. But um, I think I think the the eureka moment for me was just realizing that my love for what I actually do and what I write was greater than what my fear of what people thought. So I just decided to go for it. Oh, that's 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 awesome. That's awesome. Uh, that's awesome uh, because like. Just because I think, so interestingly for me, as I have mentioned this on Andy before, because me and Andy talk a lot, sometimes yeah. too much, because uh, we, we, do, we do a wrestling podcast together, um, Andy with Andrew <laughs> in the background. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I did say to him, like, I think I start many moons ago when I didn't have facial hair when I was like seven or something. Uh, <laughs> I had, uh, what did I do? I, yeah, I wrote like little short stories which yeah. is writing about this iconic duo known as Tom and Jerry and then, <laughs> then slowly stylized into like writing song lyrics first before poetry and then it like became poetry and yeah my love of poetry just came along and uh, magically uh, somehow some way some book publisher wanted this to exist so that's um, amazing I know and and here we are uh, so yeah uh, it's amazing the one thing I do miss, and I'm sure like everyone can vouch for this, is uh, live poetry gigs or gigs in general. Uh, I would love that, like, because obviously I only really started yeah. sharing during this whole catastrophe that is the pandemic. Yeah. Um, so I've never had the pleasure of a of a of a live gig where I've I've shared. So um, I'd really like to do that once. You know, I don't know how many times I've heard this phrase this year, but like once the world returns to normal. Hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, I was, uh, I was actually blessed to perform only once last year. Um, mm. There was that period between, um, between the films of lockdown one and lockdown two, where the world opened up enough to have outdoor gigs. So I did do a, yeah. an outdoor park gig in South End, uh, literally around Septemberish time, which was, uh, mm. which was cool. So I'm glad I at least performed once, uh, but you know, it, yeah. seems, it seems like no one's going to be performing in person until at least like, mm, well, I, I think no one will perform in person until in this country until April. That's what I'm yeah. thinking. At the very I agree. End. Probably yeah. at the earliest. And, and, and I'm like, fam, I'm gonna have a second birthday in a row. <laughs> Just a pandemonium in a pandemic is mad. <laughs> like literally, the day of my birthday was the day that we went into lockdown the first time. <laughs> oh my god! So it's just gonna happen again, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I mean, it's weird for me. Like I have a really boring day job, and like hmm. I literally one day they were like so there's this thing called coronavirus and we don't know what's going to happen and then later that day i got a laptop and got sent home and i've not been back since it's weird wow well yeah. i mean well at the, at the very least um at, the very at least, least i can work human contact anyway you know what i'm saying like, <laughs> what can i say i mean i have to, i have to admit my office as in this bedroom in my house at least I have my cats in it, so I've got cats in my office, which is always a plus. Yeah. Um, I've I've grown to love cats even more because uh, so during um, during in between like just when the world was opening up a little bit after lockdown one, I had a relationship, and it involved a cat, and <laughs> we 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 stopped going out, but it's cool, cool. We're still friends. And now I'm going out with somebody else um, that we met literally just before lockdown two began. Um, there was actually months period of uh, the, the relationship didn't last. The relationship did last more than a couple of weeks. Uh, but yeah, the one that I'm currently at, she has another cat uh, called Bumble. Uh, so you know, it's uh, literally a Bumble looking cat that's black and it's pretty cool. So yeah, like, I've been loving cats. I've learned so much about cat food as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, it's uh, it's mad. Yeah. It's probably yeah. like is what I'm gonna say. Right, <laughs> right. We'll, we'll we'll get going in in a moment too. I've just heard from Steve. <laughs> Steve, my our usual MC. <laughs> he's had a bit of an adventure getting home tonight because Steve should have been back for eight o'clock, but he just texted me now and he's he'll be with me shortly. His car can't you can't get his car going for Old Trafford. Oh, I, wow. think he'd, I think he'd been in for like what, this is not eleven o'clock and he got to work. 
and the flip finger throws in over. So, <laughs> so it's not like he's you're, you're the like. MC uh, for today, then, Andy. It seems. Oh, I'm going. I'm going to start the second half off. Let's see how we go. I go. Oops. Hang on. Is he here? Well, what's this? Me. No, right. Well, I'm going to carry on. Okay, I'm going to do the second half. I just spoke to Steve a minute ago, so I'll carry it on because I've done, I've done the first half, so it's not a problem. So, right. Okay. Just to go through the running order then for the second half, make sure I make sure if I've missed anybody off, please let me know, okay? Because from my memory, it's not the best at times sometimes. Now we're going to start the second half off in a few minutes with Steve Mingle, then Zoe, Ben, Fatima. Mike, Danita D3, this young lady here, Rania, and to finish off tonight, Rich Davenport. Is everybody okay with that running order? That's fine, good. Okie dokie then. Right, I'll just bear me a minute then. Okay, right, the start of the second half. We've got a gentleman coming up. You didn't say my name, oh, Andy. Oh, right. That's I'm glad you mentioned, Reggie. Okay. I'll bung you down, mate. I, I, I was concerned that they're going to miss somebody up. It's not concerned. It's just been moving. Oh, God, right. Sorry, Reggie. You know what I've done? <laughs> you can see this is, this is blindness. Right. It's, you're after D3. Okay. D, D, okay. And then for Amanda. Amanda's got to follow you. And I, don't, I don't think she's looking forward to that. <laughs> That's fine. Sorry about that, mate. Okay. Right. Start off then. The second half. Gentleman that's rapidly going regular here as well. And me and Amanda first met this gentleman over at one oh, of the rivals yeah. relatively recently. And he, to my mind, he stole the show every single time we saw him there. And I love the fact he comes along and he does all this really ranty poetry. And I just don't know what he's going to do. Can that's the pleasure. So, Steve Mingle. Thanks, Andy. And hello, everyone. Um, I've got uh, got a couple of poems for you tonight. Um, one old, one new. Uh, they're very different. Um, I'm going to do the old one first because it's the time of year when it becomes relevant. Uh, and it's normally relevant for about two or three weeks. Uh, it's a New Year resolution poem. Uh, and it's about the futility of dieting. Just don't waste your bloody time, all right? This is called No Chips. No chips. I'm on a diet. It really works. You ought to try it. I've now survived for 15 days without a trace of mayonnaise. I used to get me five a day from a bottle of Chardonnay. Now it's organic runner beans, broccoli and clementines. Once I thought that nothing beats a deep pan pepperoni pizza. But now for dinner I love to eat a chicken salad with two rye vita. No chips, I'm on a diet. Grill it, steam it, just don't fry it. Eating stuff that's cooked in lard will only make your arteries hard. Don't tuck into that pork pie, you prat. It's full of saturated fat. Resist that cudding greasy batter. It's simply mind over matter. Just a chunk of Stilton or Red Leicester will raise your level of bad cholesterol. And if that kebab slides down your throat, you'll end up like Mr. Creosote. No chips, I'm on a diet. Haven't you cynics all gone quiet? It's worth coping with a little hunger to make yourself look 10 years younger. I've got me GP off me back and slashed me risk of heart attack by carefully watching what I eat. Now I can almost see me feet. No chips, I'm on a diet. It's getting tough, I can't deny it. It's hard to keep that willpower strong when you're bloody ravenous all day long. Six weeks of eating things I hate and I've still not reached me target weight. It gets tougher day by day to resist that Chinese takeaway. And surely it can't really hurt if I sneak in the odd dessert. Treacle tart, spotted dick, lashings of custard nice and thick. Last night in bed I fantasised about Mr Kipling's apple, apple pies. More chips, fuck the diet. Happiness, you just can't buy it. What's the point of being thin if you're as miserable as sin? My wife's now living down the smoke. She left me for some chubby bloke. My calorie-controlled obsession had plunged her into deep depression. So if you're feeling slightly lardy, and you'd rather be more laurel than hardy, although your doc might not endorse it, just squeeze yourself into a corset. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> thanks very much. Um, right, the second one. Um, Every now and then I'm moved to write a kind of tribute poem. Um, and yesterday's events will probably end up in a tribute poem uh, to my uh, my boyhood idol. 
Um, but um, on Sunday, uh, it will be the fifth anniversary of the death of David Bowie. Um, and I was just kind of the right age to tap into him uh, with maximum effect. I was a, a, an early teenager when he first hit the scene. Uh, and uh, his, his music and the music of, of, of the people who inspired him and that he himself went on to inspire have, 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 have played a, a, a huge part in my life, I suppose. They've been a, a massive part of the soundtrack uh, to everything that's happened in the last kind of 15 years. So I've written this poem um, uh, uh, as, as a kind of tribute to, to David Bowie. And it's called, perhaps predictably, Five Years. Five years, that's all it's been. So many reflections on things we'd seen, like that night in the summer of 72. I had to phone someone, so I picked on you. The kids thought, wow, parents cowered in fright. Thank God most tellies were just black and white. Papers wanted to know whose shirts you wore and your dresses and makeup and jumpsuits galore. Even those you offended couldn't help glancing. Does he mean it, John, or is he only dancing? Ziggy, Aladdin and Halloween Jack you made them, we played them, then they never came back. A mass of cocaine, a mess on Soul Train. But you stunned us again with another new look, falling to earth with the thin white duke. Pallid, ghostly white skin, impossibly thin, crossing from station to station. Next stop, Berlin, where the music created with Eno, then Fripp, was startling and radical and incredibly hip. Your low was a high, then the sight of the wall inspired your most memorable anthem of all. Punk demolished a musical landscape so gray, prog rock and metal had had their day. For these dinosaurs, the till stopped ringing, but you stayed in fashion, your boys kept swinging. Picking up new influences like a vulture, you cemented yourself in popular culture. Lightning flash souvenirs, millions shifted. Heroes, always the soundtrack to trophies being lifted. Ashes to ashes and life on Mars made stars of Glenister, Sim and Halls. David Bowie is an inspired exhibition, a mesmeric immersion in sound and vision. But then David Bowie was. So sudden the news on that fateful day. Then we found out you planned it that way. Look at me, I'm in heaven, made the world stand still. Hardly anyone knew you'd even been ill. A consummate showman to the final breath, even making an art form out of your death. Five years, that's all it's been. So much written, heard and seen. An inspiration to everyone who tries to create. Don't rest on your laurels, you'll only stagnate. Never be frightened to try something new. You'll amaze yourself with what you can do. Don't we all wonder sometimes? Thank you. Fantastic, Steve. It's a pleasure, that one. We're mentioning David Bowie there. It brings back a lot of memories. I saw Bowie when he toured the Nine Inch Nails back in 95, was it? And I always remember that because the only concert I've ever been to where basically you ended up with no break and you ended up with Nine Inch Nails doing about an hour. Then they brought Bowie onto a couple of songs with them. And then Mo Nine Inch Nails' back in the band went off. Trent Reza stayed on stage. Bowie's band came on. He Bowie did Trent Reznor did a couple of songs with David Bowie in his band, then went off and Bowie carried on. My legs were absolutely aching my fuck after that. They were, we did four and a half hours, I remember it well. <laughs> that was some night, that one. <laughs> Brilliant stuff, mate. Okay, right, moving straight on. Now, over to another lady now. And this lady, he only doesn't live too far away from me in Amanda, actually. She lives in Duckingfield. She's a fantastic manager at Enzo. Ladies and gentlemen, Zoe. Siobhan Howell. Thank you, Andy. Right, I've got three for you. <laughs> this first one is called um, Showering. This bottle, the one I find myself reaching for, the one you left behind, almost empty, the only thing you forgot in your hurry to leave. This is the bottle I reach for now. Hot water on skin, and your bottle in my hand. The last liquid remains of you, your place in this house, this room. I rub the familiar scent into my skin, your scent, lavender and tea tree. I rub, lather, let your scent cling to me, feeling the sharp sting of the tea tree 
and the way the skin shivers at the coldness of the liquid, then wash it off, wash you off. Let your scent run off my body and down into the drain. I am washing you away, the last of you, all except those last few traces of scent that linger intimately. Okay. And then my second one is um, 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 one of my mum poems. So this is about that weird sensation in your belly after you've had babies and they're all grown up and you can still sort of almost feel them moving. It's bizarre. Hollow house. I can feel them moving. Years after, hollow house, empty at the core, yet the blip and flip, the trick. Ripples under the surface, muscle memories that won't be still, stretch and heave. I feel them dance again, watching them racing outwards, yet feeling them within. Pounding footfall, a kicking heartbeat, that soft space, that hollow house, dreaming itself full. And then I'm going to leave you with um, a wintry one, soon as how it's, it's winter. This one's called Prince in Snow. Little three-star tread pattern breaking away across fresh snow. Not for you the crosshatch of so many shoes all heading in the same direction. The crunch of untouched snow giggling out across the field. Yet, I am worried. There is no adult tread stomping after you. Thank you, everybody. Brilliant stuff, Zoe. I always, I always love your work. It's like it's, it's got a real elegant look. I don't like the pennies, really. And it's beautiful stuff to hear. So, okay. Slight change in running order now, but of course, I can't neglect to, neglect to leave this gentleman out because he won't speak to me again. So. Is our fellow speakeasy regular host tonight, Mr. Steve Smythe. Thanks, Andy. <clears throat> Thanks, Ed. Thanks very much. Sorry I'm late. I, I really don't like to sort of, you know, like just dive in and everything, but um, I was working and uh, I couldn't get the car started because it was freezing. <laughs> I've, I've worked outdoors for three years now and no, that's never happened to me before. Where I couldn't actually get in the car after a shift. So I just had to get some, um, I had to sort of get some people to help me and then and de-ice the car and everything else. So uh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's a difficult act to follow uh, with Zoe. It's some uh, terrific stuff there. I'll just read, a, <clears throat> I'll just read a, one poem, um, short, fairly short poem. That's based on something that um, I sort of saw a few years ago and I just made some notes at the time. Anyway, I wrote it up shortly before Christmas. It's a short poem, it's called it's called Diamond Lil. Cigarette dripping from her lip, she hitches up her sequin dress, gives chase along the pavements outside Blackpool's winter gardens, yelling gangway to pedestrians who part like a startled pack. But the thief disappears just as her stiletto snaps and she curses, coughs up phlegm, straightens her wig, takes a drag, her powdered frown fading, and with hands on hips, she throws her head back, imagines a snatches face when he rummages in her bag, finding only lipstick, foundation, and a disposable razor blade. Thanks. Tremendous, Steve. Thank you, mate, for that one, mate. I'm glad, I'm glad you got back to that, mate. As Thank I'm you very much. Thanks. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm sorry for people who have not heard. Um, hope to catch you again when... Uh, it's just one of those things that I've worked to, it's very rare that I work a, a Wednesday night, let alone two Wednesday nights like this. So when, because I missed, I missed before Christmas as well. So I'm looking, really looking forward to, to hearing everybody um, and, and obviously co-hosting or hosting in future. So thanks very much. Cheers, Steve. You made me think of them. I went up down to oh, an area just outside between Wigan and Lee once and Gordon, Gordon Zola might remember this one. I yeah, did a gig with Jeff Rama once, and they said, yeah, similar to your situation there, Steve, where we went to go and get Jeff's car going in the night and it conked out completely because of the cold. And it was one of those ones, then the snow started coming down, and we were sat waiting for the AA two hours. We had about five inches of snow around us. 
if you weren't sure when I get home that night. So, but anyway, I was digressing. Okay, right. Um, obviously, now Steve's read. I'm gonna, just going to give the running order the rest of the night. If anybody else that's not read wants to read, message me at the bottom, okay? And we'll go and get some mails in at the end of it. So, in a minute, I'm going to get Ben to read. Then we're going to have Fatima, Mike Booth, Dionetta, D3, Reggie, Amanda, Rani, and then to finish off the night, Rich Davenport. Okay, moving on then, on to our next reader. And I always like when I've got Steve here now. Steve always says, You like, you always tell me in Amanda, speakeasy hardcore. So the next one is a speakeasy hardcore person. Ben. Oh, cheers. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I hope this isn't too hardcore, but I've got a couple of poems. And uh, this one's called Operation Moonshot. Um, I'd forgotten about Operation Moonshot and whatever it was, I can't even remember. Something to do with testing uh, for COVID. So this is Operation Moonshot. Operation Moonshot, Operation Microdot, Operation Monoglot, Operation Enoch, Operation Triple Lock, Operation Mr. Spock, not logistic, not in stock, Operation Hands Face Cock, Operation Sunblock, Operation Outdam Spot, Operation Skyrocket, Pocket Picking, Gone Missing, Thanks a Bundle, Crock of Shit. Thanks. Um, so this is my other one. Like, it's a bit of a, like, someone in a pandemic uh, on his own too much, probably. So this is called I Am My Own Dog Now. I am my own dog now. 20 second video clip. Head through the cat flap. Take myself to a beauty spot and bag my own shit. I am my own pot plant, hydroponically climbing the walls. Dry me, smoke me, till I'm not me. I'm not weed, I'm mothballed, I'm green fly, I'm floating above me. I am my own wife and my own best friend, caught in the act. I could have wrung my own neck twice when I walked in on me and me. But I only ever wanted the best for myself. No one stand in my own way. I am my own chronic addiction, wake up needing me, spend the day meing myself up, even if it's shit quality me. It's better than agony, juddering cold sweats, hallucinations. Phil Mitchell, Gary Barlow, Jimmy Somerville. I don't know who I am. I am my own Führer, my own dead-eyed obedience. Several Eastern fronts later, still insisting on complete loyalty at gunpoint. Try not to roll my eyes at my own megalomania. And although I won't say it, feeling a tad let down, I am my own virus, festering in the wet grooves of my body, polluting my own air, glued to nostril hair. I go through me, like a dew, I am a pox in the egg loop, chicken hoop of my own broiler breeding scare. I am my own baby. I'm putting up for adoption. How can I look after myself when I can't even look after myself? I am my own God now. I don't believe in. Every night saying empty prayers to myself and not replying. Thanks. Cheers. Fantastic. Fantastic, that, Ben. You've got such a quirky sense of humour. I love it about you, that you're writing there. You may, be, you may be making me and Amanda laugh that much in that last piece, then. I've dropped the pen, so I'm, like, I'm trying to make notes of all the things. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. Thank you, mate. OK. <laughs> straight on. Well, Moving straight on. Well, thank you again, mate. Right. We've got uh, another new coming out to speak easy. This one's come from a recommendation from my good friend Jeff Arama. He had this young lady on over to my son Lord Bolton and wrote to recently. And he dropped me an email straight after this one to tell me to put this young lady on the speakeasy as quick as I could. Couldn't get her on last month because we booked up, but I believe she's from the Halifax area. So, and I've seen a couple of videos on Facebook and she's really, really talented. So I'm looking forward to this. Fatima and Lisbeth. 
Oh my god. Now I'm gonna totally just be shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll be great, Fatima. Um Happy New Year, everyone. It's so nice to be here. This is my first kind of Zoom live that I've done since it's been a while. Um I write a lot about trauma, healing, growth. Um, the piece I'm gonna be sharing with you today um needs a content warning. So if everybody's okay, I'll start. Winter's garden. In her garden, no roses, lilies, or nurturing wellsprings. A skilled huntress, hell bent on crippling her offspring. Motherhood weaponized, she gleefully tortures the pretty butterflies, clutching on with tender strings, dreaming of one day sprouting strong eagle wings, casually flying by soaring through a clear blue skyline and defiantly holding up two V signs. But her favorite pastime is role playing in fantasy. More more eyes leaving you breathless and terrified, caramelized, demonized, scriptures used as lullabies to soften and tenderize, a matrix crafted to dehumanize, a memorized child line, pre-online, Madre Victor Frankenstein, instilling, unbending, Loyalty to the bloodline, accustomed to living in everlasting confines, deprived of sunshine. Life, one long test of reading between blurred lines and surviving homemade landmines. Dust till dawn, praying, convinced her she's one of a kind. Divine, piousness, the chosen veneer of the serpentine. Hopelessly surrender, morph into supply. Until the narcissist's bloated, sated and satisfied. And when you're empty, hollow and bone dry, you're abandoned, discarded, banished from the synthetic shrine. Every day replays a predator praying as prey, one that's extremely difficult to conquer or slay. No one knew the truth except her castaways. Daily threats, she'll do a rose west. Born depressed, raised in the cuckoo's nest. Nothing was how it appeared. The fear and stress represses your growth. Stunted as a mere tadpole, enduring. Uh, takes an overwhelming toll on the mind, body and soul. Every breath burns like hot coals in my throat. The hashtag be kind doesn't exist for the scapegoat. Trying my best in this cruel world to cope, wilting without a grain of hope, dominated and controlled in my mind. Death is the only passage out of this bleak black hole. Traumatized girl, terrified of being alone, vulnerable and overexposed. In retrospect, I really should have known, but stupid me didn't recognize it was a fucking trap. The narcissist family can never be a wolf pack. Unhappy, vindictive, vengeful, hateful, jealous megalomaniacs, surviving each dreadful day, sucking on 20 MG Prozacs, how they sat back and laughed. A lamb to the slaughter, forever treated as an unwanted stepdaughter. Mistakenly, I loved them all, come hell or high water. She told me how she wished I'd miscarried as the ones before she'd shed. Brick red, unfazed by blood spread. Not to be part of her seven living dead, but a knot of threads floating. No more scapegoating, R.I.P. on my porcelain deathbed. Waiting to be flushed away with the filthy toilet water instead. I always knew they wanted me dead. Snuffed out, carved up, curdling in mother's black or blue suitcase. Form and bone buried in the cellar, never to recover. Not one would shudder, and the wretched family would continue on as if I'd never existed in the first place. She'd expertly rigged the race, crowned herself the king by manipulating all the strings. The ritualistic abuse mutated into a heinous worshipping, the architect of a tyrannical new world a throne of souls, and we were disposable playthings, swathed in our scored skins, indoctrinated to accept a 1984 reality. She's big brother. She's our everything. Thank you so much. Thanks, Fatima. That's some fantastic use of written there, there was. I loved, loved the way you presented that. Brilliant. You're, you're as good as the video, so you do on Facebook. So thank you tonight for that. Oh, oh, thank you for having you're me. Welcome. You're always welcome to come, come again if you want to as well. So I will do. I will do definitely. Thank you. Okay, right. Moving on now, and I'm going to embarrass Steve again now. I love I love this when Steve when Steve presents his. You ever see it sometimes? He has sayings. And I love doing these. Where he's got next one up is speakeasy regular, and he is because he's been he's been, he's been, been to them probably near as many as me. As me and Amanda and Steve have been to this since we started running night. He's a great poet again, so Mr. Mike Boom.
Mike, you there? You. We've got a problem here with Mike in one second. Let's just see if we can see from this. Uh, I think he's gone. Oh, we've lost Mike. We've lost Mike. Oh, what? Well, I'll move on. Um, no doubt Mike will be back in a bit then, so what's we'll, we'll happened there? Okay, right. We've got to, another new poet now to speak easy now, and, and I'm looking forward to this one because I spoke to a colleague who's with us tonight at the moment as well, and she recommended this lady to me, and I've got her on a spoken label relatively soon as well, so I'm looking forward to this. I'm just going to introduce by stage name, and she'll take it from there. D3. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy onwards New Year. and upwards, everybody. Onwards and upwards. So um, <clears throat> my actual name, I'm not trying to, you know, keep myself so incognito that you can't find me. My actual name is Danetta. Danetta Copeland. But yeah, my stage name is D3. It's much easier for people to remember. And um, it's actually because I am the third of four sisters that all, are, all our names begin with D. It's just that I'm the third D. It's not even. It's not even that special. It's just where I come in the light. <clears throat> so I'm. Um. A, I'm a spoken word artist from Leeds, um, but I also run online writing workshops called Express Yourself for Mental Health, which I just started up last year. And it's to teach people, not you guys, because I know you lot know what you're doing, but it's to teach people how um, to to use writing therapeutically. But you guys could still join in and just be part of the the crew and the ambiance um also sarah and i sarah autumn there we've just started up a new radio show called loudspeaker which is a spoken word radio show so that's how i've kind of been pulled into here and now know andy and that's how it's gone so this piece that i'm going to do is um about i have actually suffered from ms for 21 years that's about and so this is what this is about. And it actually is, it, it's, it's, a, it's about, there's times when I have um, obviously a bad attacks and things like that. And I'm, I'm, I'm bed bound and I might have to have medication and things like that. And um, during that time, my mind actually shuts down. And then when I kind of get over that or if I've had steroids or something, bam, I'm back. So this is what this song's about. <clears throat> Like an awakening, dawn breaking in, feels on my skin, inhale lungs in jail, they try to escape from within. Eyes explore everything, mind won't store anything. I've been here before, it's how it always begins. Don't think I'm in control just cause I know the script. I refuse to let go, I was born to do this. My thoughts are like string, I can't get a grip. Try recall the story before the total eclipse. Creeping round my mind for signs of infiltrators. Take time to rifle through this round of traders. Pray Praise God for granting me another day bless that rummaging for what I need to hold a fresh system dysfunctioning and exhale of breath I diagnose how much control I must endure effects I know a mess won't let me go until I'm laid to rest but I just keep on bouncing back just when you least expect sensation is distorted but I'm moving on everybody has reported that I'm standing strong I try to explain their understanding wrong and any strength I have shown before is almost gone conclusion I'm my own worst enemy Confusion setting in with no apologies. You see, my policy says there's no guarantee because I don't own this body. I'm just a licensee. So here we go again, messing with my brain on the brink of saying it's the new addition, demolition of veins. There's no recognition. Life is lost in chains. I tried to gain admission, but I've got to attain. So I'm floating on the edge of consciousness and jumping off the ledge is the consequence i'm walking in the abyss keep searching for my bliss don't tell the secret because i speak this in confidence ticking bombs always telling me the time reminding me that i'll forever be entwined confined to exist within this paradigm designed to self-destruct is what i've been assigned a numbness in my fingers tremors down my spine i see you in my reflection so you leave me blind sometimes i can't even find the strength to climb you're dulling all my senses when i'm destined to shine this little light of mine that's when i took my head to the sky please give me a sign i'm searching for some kind of intervention divine for 
for this war, but I'm not one to stay in line in this community of lesions. I am undermined, leading me through all the seasons I follow behind. Keep depleting me of freedom like I've done a crime. I hear you breathing from the corners of my mind. A neurological disease, and there is no escaping this neurological disease, and you can find me close to breaking. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Wow. <laughs> wow. I've got to say, Eddie. If I, if I had to try to do a piece at pace, I'd have completely left off breath by the end of it. <laughs> oh my God, do you know what? This is true. I was, I've been in a jungle band for 12 years. That's why I'd write things to rhyme. And have, <gasps> yeah, right? so, I, got, I got the idea of that because I've got friends that do lots of music. And I, yeah, I, yeah. I saw it that straight away. Fantastic. Worked really so, well back then. I have been a performing spoken word artist for over 15 years, but I, I play with different genres. I've been in a jungle band for over 12 years, but I do my own style, what I call repoetry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, yeah, straight away there. It's great. You cross so, all boundaries, that, really. So Come when I was doing it. that piece there, I was actually trying to keep myself at a slow pace because normally in the jungle band like like an awakening dawn breaking in feels on my skin in her lungs and judge they try to escape from within that's how i normally speak i'm trying to bring it down to we'll speak to do easy that, level possibly. speak easy level so shall i do another one or is my time uh, up? yeah yeah you've got to have a short piece yeah got to have a short piece about a quick one yeah okay i'll do it i'll do, I'll do it faster then <laughs> <laughs> go for it <clears throat> um this is called um, Invasion from Underground. Don't just scratch my surface, let my skin divide, pierce through layers into the core inside. Deep, this ain't a prayer, it's my life's design. Hope you're prepared for what's released. Now I'm alive, long lasting flow forever, bleeding till the day I die. Don't try to undermine my mind in front of my eye, cause it's a conscious eruption blown up into the sky. Leaving lava burning, but keeping my fire bright. Oozing through oceans, infecting rivers worldwide. Feeding vegetation, hate to all adapted, refined. Unmistakable articulation on the grapevine, running with the currents controlling the tide and time. Heat causes my evaporation up to the clouds. Brought on if intense mental pain is making me frown. We pulse off of torrential rain falling to the ground and drenching all terrain until the dry patch is found. Cause you just make me stronger, trying to break me down. Gloves are on, whistles gone. Ready for this round, throw some blows, I'll take them. But you can't knock me out, taking places an invasion from underground. I'll just leave you there, guys. I hope wow. you enjoyed it. Brilliant. Tremendous. Performance what? 2021. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Right, okay. Poor gentleman has got to try and follow this now. And <laughs> he's shaking his head now because he knows I'm going to mention put him, put him some fun now. But he's a tremendous performer. And he's speak, speak easy, wreck love, Mr. Michael Booth. Oh, Mike, right. what would you got? Well, I just scrolled through my collection for my jungle numbers and I can't find any, unfortunately. So you're going to have to make <laughs> do with one of my ordinary ones. But... I'm loving the new speakers tonight. Some really great stuff. Great stuff, everybody. It's really fresh and new stuff. I'm really enjoying it. Sorry I didn't join till a bit late. I've just been really busy. So I've got nothing new. These are two old ones, but one of them I'd forgotten I'd written. And uh, they're not very upbeat, I'm afraid. They're a bit down, but then again, it is January. Um, so I'm not going to cheer you up, I'm afraid, this time. Uh, the first one is about my uncle, um, and I met him just before he was he was dying, really, but it's trying to bring a positive message from that, and it's called Get Up and Gone. I remember his phrase that my get up and go has got up and gone. Um, so this is the poem about meeting him. I remember when my uncle, with watery eyes, told me how his get up and go had got up and gone. We were looking at the framed photo of his wife, 40 years together, and now only one. His shoulders shook, a man once so strong, used to laughter, drinks, and quick with a quip or a joke. And I remember too, when I too lost sight of the sun, my vision blurred, tears in early morn. All hope seemed dead, the future blank and dark, each day a struggle of trying not to slip, 
but hanging on to life boys, holding by my nails. In fear and shaking, all my strength was torn. But even as we take the punches to the gut, our bodies hold up stronger than we dare. Life's still life, although we move no more, and slowly, seeds of hope, when watered by our tears, begin to grow small shoots of life, which hold the light. Before we know it, shadows fade away. Despite all evidence against, love begins to break through. Giving, loving, feeling every day, gives somehow sense of something new and true. Thank you. So that was the first one. And this is one I'd forgotten I'd even uh, written. I'm, I'm a teacher and I was teaching a poem today called um, Words by Gillian Clark. I recommend you have a look at that. It's a really great poem about a baby growing into an old woman. It's called Words by Gillian Clark. It's quite hard to find on the internet actually, but it's a really interesting poem. And this is one that I seem to have written, but I don't remember writing it. <laughs> so I was just scrolling through my Word documents and I found one called The Word, and here it is. It's kind of a similar poem to hers and similar to the one I've just read. And it's called The Word. It's a bit of a discovery for me because I've never read this before. <laughs> I think I wrote it. Maybe I cut and paste it from someone else. I don't know. <laughs> and it goes like this, The Word. In the beginning, the babies cry as breath shocks life into our lungs. Then sounds as tears will fill our eye. We burble on, we speak in tongues. But words then come to name our fears, our triumphs, pains, loves lost and won. Mind and body grow with years, a life well lived, a web well spun. A sacred vow on wedding day, a name is given to each birth. Our words bring sense to what we say. With every vowel, we rule the earth. Words are words, not sticks and stones. They cannot harm us, faithful, true. They reach beyond our blood and bones to help us see the world anew. But come old age, these friends can go as back to babbling baby's breath. Their meaning now we cannot know until the last we say is death. But after all, words rise again, babbling free from out the grave. Beauty, love can conquer pain. Our lasting memory, words can save. Thank you very much. Really, admire that. Really, really touching stuff there. I must admit, I, I've not heard that one by Gillian Clark you mentioned. I, I know we'll stop a little bit. I'm going to I'll try and shut that down tomorrow. And next time I speak to you, I'll let you know what I think of it. So but it's a beautiful you, mate, poem, Andy. If you can't find it, I'll send you an electronic copy because I have struggled to find it on the internet, but um, I can send you one. Yeah, I'll have a look tomorrow and I'll let you know definitely. Okay, thanks evening. everyone. Okay, right, moving right on then. Okay, a couple of a few people already. I'm me and Amanda doing a very informal writing workshop at the moment, which Mike attends as well and always keeps us entertained. He does. Now, one of the other gentlemen that goes there. And he's got a most brilliant catchphrase, and I'll let him say it in a minute. He always cracks me and bands up with us. Is our friend Reggie. Reggie, you're on board next, mate. All right. Here we go, folks. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll bring you up, but I'm going to have to bring you down later, but don't worry about it. So, the first one is actually coming from the workshop that Andy and Amanda have been so kindly putting together since April when we thought lockdown was only until June. <laughs> All right, so drink. <laughs> well, wait, anyway. So this one is basically you wake up and you have a superpower. And what is it? So here it goes. It took a while to notice, but it was only after I was late for work that I noticed that I was in fact 30 minutes early. Was this actually a superpower? I mean, when I ordered online, I wasn't given any description as to what it would be. The email just said, expect your delivery by tomorrow morning. So there it was. I could freeze time and walk freely in a world where everyone except me was trapped, frozen. Call it what you want, but I could make everyone wait. I could hold on for a little bit longer. Slightly disappointed as usual, I was expecting X-ray vision, invisible bones, strength of steel, but no, what I got was a time stopper, or as I like to call myself, clock man. 
It's been a been a month now, and I won't complain. Extra hours sleep in the morning, long baths in the evening, better life decisions, job interviews, and first dates were a huge hit, I must say. The only thing that was missing was a rewind and a fast forward button. Once the time was let loose, there was no holding it back, and I could only make it freeze for no more than 60 minutes. So after a year, I want to return it. Was this superpower any good? I'm not sure. Life is too perfect now, and I'm officially bored. Hope you can help me with this matter. Yours faithfully, Clockman. Drink. Drink. Dry January drink. Uh, <laughs> that's before lockdown. Vegan airy, drinking airy, booze and airy. All right. Right, Reggie, have you got a second one, mate? I have a second one. I'm going to change the drink now. Now, so this one is, is, is slightly different because basically on December 26th, my mother passed away um, and she wasn't ill. She just passed away. She got ill and then 40 hour, 48 hours, she, she passed away. So this is nothing. It's just things that I wanted to say. So it's called to my mother, things I wanted to say. And uh, I'll have a drink before that. It's just a ramble. I have two, actually. So nothing can prepare you to become a motherless son or daughter. In life, no matter how you felt, love, respect, spite, anger, and so on, in death, there is only one feeling. Like pebbles on a beach, love, respect, spite, anger, and so on, are covered and washed away by the largest of all waves, what we simply call grief. A heart can be broken more than once, sometimes twice in the same year, and I know that for a fact. Nothing can prepare you for life. Nothing can prepare you for heartache. Nothing can prepare you to become a motherless son or a daughter. Once there was a floor in which I stood, once there were walls that covered me, once I knew answers, and once I had replies, once I was something, once I was someone's son. And in less than 48 hours, that was all slept away, like dust, like ashes, like snow. My mother was far from perfect. She didn't really like to cook. She never learned to ride a bike, but she taught me how to drive. She taught me how to be good, maybe too good. She taught me to respect and have consideration for others. She taught me how to be naive and how to be afraid. But she never taught me how to live without her. And that's just something that I'm learning on my own. Thank you. Drink. Fantastic, Reggie. Really, really evocative pieces. They're both in the completely different ways. And that's what I love about your work. It's, it varies from piece to piece. It really does. So it made me think a lot there. And I, I've not really talked about it as people know me know, but I only lost my dad back in 2019 when he had a stroke. So it, like I said, it brought a lot of memories back to what we went through with that as well, mate. And we got my thought, you're in my thoughts on that one, so mate. So well, my dad, had, my dad had two strokes and he's still around. And my mother just got so yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. So. Exactly. Yeah. It, it just, it's life's the funny thing at the best times. But thank you again, mate. It's been a pleasure today. And I'm going to remind you on the time, my honesty for sharing that. Now, okay, it's my turn to move out of the way now because it's time for the third member of the Speakeasy team to read. Go give me the elbow, then. The, bo the boss, Amanda. <laughs> right, okay, this one's called No Such Thing as Clothes. Wearing clothes infringes my freedom to walk down the street with it all on your own. But that's not my only reason for leaving my clothes and going about. I don't believe in a thing called naked. I refuse to be restricted, and those garments are so outdated. Clothes are for the afflicted, but I've seen the truth. Frosty mornings aren't so bad, the cold on the effects to you. Getting dressed is a symbol, oh fat, and the advice keeps on fluctuating. Clothes protect, then clothes offer no protection, so just quit with all the hating. Standing in the mirror, admiring my own clothes reflection. Don't drag me into your politics. Just let me be. It's not too much to ask. Don't cover my skin, it makes me sick. Maybe I'll just wear a mask. Well, I'm not a complete dick.
it's always it's interesting when you when you're living with somebody like as a fellow writer, and you also like sometimes you go on to unpick what they're writing sometimes. And <laughs> Amanda never seems to surprise me. That's all I'm gonna say there. I remember asking about that piece as well. So anyway. Okay, right, we've got two people left now and two completely different writers as well. This, I'm looking forward to this. Okay, the next one up is a lady and I've not seen her ages, but she WhatsApped me this morning and I think she's Milton, if I'm correct, but she used to come down to speak easy back in the day when we could actually do it in person. So it's fantastic to have her back again. Rani. Thanks, guys, and thanks for fitting me in today. Um, some amazing... Uh, poets today really enjoyed tonight and it's great to see so many new faces um so i've got um three short ones this one um i wrote on the back of a um a workshop i did with joelle taylor who i love um so yeah it, it was based on the stonewall riots for those of you that know <clears throat> okay mad men and women people 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 Van Ronk, people, people, Wolfgang, so many are faceless, nameless, assault, assault, assault of officer through an unnamed object, refused to comply, existed, resisted arrest, damage to the roof, damage to the engine, damage unseen to the head, the head, the heart, became very loud, refused to comply, existed, struck an officer with a roll newspaper, refused to comply, existed, but those that have been archived, mad women and mad men, Marilyn, Vincent, Raymond, Marsha and Stormy live on. Thanks guys. Okay, um, so this one is, um, I suppose in a similar vein, uh, on the back of, um, I want something about the Holocaust and um, yeah. So this is called, they will come for you. <clears throat> they will come for you in the dead of the night and bright light of a crisp morning, knock your door down without a care for the babes asleep, unaware of what's to come. They will come for you when you least expect it, follow you oh so discreetly as you go about your business. Befriend your neighbours, your friends, your family, infest themselves into the frameworks of your kin and make you feel at home. World-class chameleons biding their time until there's no more shades of the rainbow left. They will come for you just as you've managed to settle your nerves, the baby, the debts, bills, fi bills finally breaking even, and then bam! You wonder in that moment how it happened so fast, too engulfed in the daily struggle to acknowledge the patterns that were there plain to see. They will come for you, uprooting everything you painstakingly built by hands worn to the bone, blood, sweat and tears, miles between the place you now call home, left behind for a so-called better life until you end up behind bars, develop scars that will never fade and stay awake to the silence of your cells, stay awake to the shadowy sounds of your babes crying in your ears. They will come for you and you'll wish you'd, you'd been more prepared, learn more English, watch the six o'clock news so you could speak a little bit more like them so you wouldn't get that pitiful look every time you ask them to clarify as you verify your own existence, they will come for you and me. Thank you. <clears throat> um, and this one um, is called Patchwork Heart. I thought in order to repair the parts that were broken, I would have to undo myself piece by painstaking piece, unpick all the threads that make me me, unthread the threads of life, of grief, of strife and deep heartache, quilt my emotions into a patchwork shield, drift into nowhere, cushioned by layers upon layers, with no plan to go forward and nowhere to go back, stood still in quicksand, when you don't know where's up or down and your faith in humanity is tested, 
as everyone else carries on using your veins for their drug-fueled influx while you bleed dry on the pavement. That's when it's time to repair your patchwork cart. Thanks, guys. Fantastic, Rani. It's been great to see you. When was the last time we saw you at Speakeasy? About 18? Um, oh, gosh, probably... Well, look, before lock, before the first lockdown, uh, maybe yeah, February, I think it was there. Ages ago, wasn't it? But it's great to see you. Yeah, you too. Thanks, guys. I, I co-wrote a book on the fan on about the Holocaust a couple of years ago with a friend of mine, and that second piece really resonated well with it. Great piece all around that. So, thank you today. I'll speak to you again. But oh, all, you're always welcome. Thank you. Know, when I come back thank again, you. That one, so. Right. Okay. We're on to the, the conclusion now, and. Following on from obviously the Grant Kearney and last year, last last one, uh, I did a podcast of this gentleman, of course, spoke on Mindful again a couple of weeks ago now, and I've just released it actually yesterday. And this gentleman that we're going to do now is going to conclude for us tonight. Uh, originally from the Bolton area, but he's not living, he'll tell you himself more anyway, but he's a bloody nutter in the nicest possible way. <laughs> Fantastic comic poet, Rich Davenport. Take it away, Rich. Yeah. We lost Rich. I believe it. <laughs> oh well. Sorry guys, we've lost Rich Davenport. <laughs> we have, we haven't lost him, he's right there. He's there, he's, he's muted. muted. I can see him, but he's just I can't hear him he's that muted. Uh, I'm just trying to find him from muting then. Where is he? He's done it himself. He's unmuted now. Right. Rich, are you there, mate? Oh, no, I still got no sound. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I've got you. Right. Fantastic. Okay. No worries. I was getting worried for a second, mate. <laughs> no worries. Well, thanks very much for having me on the podcast, Andy. I really enjoyed it, and I've got some gibberish for everyone this evening. Uh, I specialise in poems of extreme gormlessness. Um, I've had my first book published uh, last year, actually called Gormless. Um, and um, there's a, I'm donate, donating a percentage from the book. I've got ME, which I wouldn't recommend. Um, so I'm donating a, a percentage from, from every book to the ME Association. Um, and I have some gibberish for you now. This first one, um, a mate of mine illustrated the book. Uh, this first bit is based on the Northern swear expression, Bloody Nora. Bloody Nora! Which to me sounds like an old lady who's become a serial killer. Uh, and this is actually Bloody Nora, if you can see her there. Uh, I've combined the idea of the serial killer with a knit nurse. Uh, so this is the Ballad of Bloody Nora. Nasty notions nag within the noggin of old knit nurse Nora. After 50 years of scalp surveillance, she could stand no more. Her sanity was slowly stolen by insomnia. Her husband was Nora. Criminally insane would be the best description for her. For decades, the kid's knit discomfort really got her goat. But now, the goat's been sacrificed. She's flipped and slit its throat. She doesn't blame the children, gives discreet shampoo, no shame. It's crystal clear in Nora's eyes, the parents are to blame. With her meat cleaver in hand, she now begins her killing spree. You filthy gits have all got nits as far as I can see. See her bulging egg-eyed glare, she's deadly as a rabid stoat. Nora's knit cure is simple, cuts your hair off at the throat. Her rampage knows no limits as she tears across the nation. Septuagenarian serial killer seeks to spread decapitation. From town to town she travels in her mobile home, a Torah. She's still at large. Pray you don't face the blade of bloody Nora. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. Um, um, thanks very much. Uh, this next one is, uh, right, this is based on a Scottish word. It's an old world, oldie worldy Scottish word, Hochmagandi, which you spell like, I don't know if you can see that, uh, probably Hochmagandi, which is an ancient Scottish word for sex, and it was used by the great Scottish poet, um, Robbie Burns. Uh, now, you've heard of um, Fifty Shades of Grey. This is Seven Shades of Hochmagandi. And if you want to join in shouting off McGandy at the end of every verse, do feel free. We can't touch you for it. Right. This is number one, the bag in basement BG. Come and join me by the fireside, dear. Let's have a glass of brandy. And if the fancy takes you, there'll be time for Hoch McGandy. Okay. Number two, there's life in the old dog yet. 
I'm 93 years old, and though my legs are bowed and bandy, with Viagra and a splint, I can still manage hot the Gandhi. Number three, one sniff of the barmaid's apron. I cannot take my drink. I'm off my tits on half a shandy. It gives me brewer's droop, leaves me incapable of hot the Gandhi. Number four, in every nook and cranny, if you get married on a nudie speech, you'll get all sandy. You'd better have a show before attempting Hoch Magandi. Number five, that Manilow magic. Barry Manilow sang songs about ladies with names like Mandy. Mandy was nice, but as for that woman in his 1981 hit single Bermuda Triangle, oh, she was a wrong one, bugging off with another man right in front of poor Barry and broke his heart, all because she couldn't control her sexual lust for Hoch Magandi. Number six, fringe benefits. Morgan Freeman was a chauffeur for Miss Daisy, Jessica Tandy. She didn't pay his wage in cash, she paid in Hock Magandy. Number seven, you'll have to get out of the habit. I've been a celibate monk for 50 years, but I'm still randy. No oh, bollocks to the monastery. It's time for Hock Magandy. Now, one final word of warning. Chastity is fine and dandy, but... The human race would be extinct if not for Hoch Magandi. Um, I'm conscious of time. I've got time for one more. You too, if you want to, Rich. Go ahead. We've not done too bad to the next time, mate. No worries. Um, this comments is getting here. Yeah. I'm quite happy to do two, mate. But no problem with that. Do two, mate. No problem. This one is called Pantalones de Amor which is Spanish for the trousers of love. Um, it's probably better if you imagine Antonio Banderas reading this to you. I know it's a stretch, but if you have any drinking, now's the time, then come. Right, pantalones de amor. In my wardrobe, they swing from a hanger above. Pantalones de amor, the trousers of love. They are made of black velvet with diamonds down the seam. I must wear them with earplugs, cause the ladies all scream. My erogenous trousers fill them with delight. At the bottom, they're flared. Round their buttocks, they're tight. So tight are my trousers that when ladies greet me, they ask, are those castanets in your pocket or are you just pleased to make me? I'm chased down the street in these lady arousers, but their love's not for me. It is just for the trousers. Hypnotized and bewitched by the diamonds that gleam, they claw at them wildly and pull at the seams. I can't run fast enough, so I have to be smarter. I'm afraid if they catch me, they'll beat my piñata. With the power of trousers comes responsibility. And the ladies around here, they run faster than me. So they hang now in mothballs. I don't wear them no more. Dangerous love trousers. Pantalonish, they are more. Thank you very much. You're all very kind. Thank you. Right, this final one's a bit rude. Do you mind a slightly rude one? Right, it's called Three Meals with Roger. Don't stir the porridge with your penis. Don't use your dick to spread the jam. Don't put your chadger in the sugar puffs. You've made an awful first impression on me, ma'am. Don't use your anus as an ashtray. Don't smear the ketchup in your crack. Don't poke a sausage up your sphincter. Or these friends of ours may not invite us back. Do you have to dip your gonads in the goulash? Must you bathe your bollocks in the broth? Oh, and now you've got your testes in the teapot. Well, I hope you scold the buggers. You've gone too far this time. I'm off. <laughs> Tremendous, Rich. Oh, Thanks for having me. Thank you. You absolutely crap me in a man up, then. Now, anyone's wondering, Rich, there's people commenting here, but mm -hmm. where can they get your book from? So we just tell people. Absolutely, it's, it, it's uh, Chin Beard Books. I'll tell if you like, it's chinbeardbooks.com and just go to the, the buying section. I can type it in the uh, doodads if you like in the comments. Hang on, it's yes, do that. We've got a couple of spare yet, so yeah, get it down, Rich. Anybody wants to get hold of Rich's book and they don't get time to save the content, drop me a message, get them, and I'll put you in contact with him. His details on the podcast did him, they absolutely cracked me in a manner up. He did when we spoke to him a couple of weeks ago. And the best thing, I've actually got the book. And the last two poems in there, we we forgot about me and Amanda. 
and it was just cracking us up then, Rich. So that says it all, mate. So, Thank you anyway, much. guys, girls. Thanks for giving us a great laugh, Rich. Great way to yeah. end. Yeah. Enjoy your stuff too. Thank you. Right up that, Rich. Thank you so much. No worries. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you. Right, well, that's it tonight, guys and girls. So I think Steve wants a quick word on it before we log out for the night. Is that, do you, you got anything you want to say, Steve? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not a word. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> no, except, except to say, because you've said it all, Andy, fantastic. Great to see everybody and new people and, uh, and people who've been uh, sp done speakers before. Um, obviously, we'll be carrying this on for as long as we need to carry it on for. Um, you know the details in terms of messaging Andy and, and the speakeasy page, dropping us a line if you want a slot on the first Wednesday of February, which is, you know, anybody know? First Wednesday of Feb? Anyway, first, it's easy to remember, first Wednesday of Feb. So, and, Andy, um, I'll pass back over to you and you can let people know the sort of uh, the details of that. But, uh, Thank you very much, everybody, and it's um, uh, yeah, it's great stuff. Sorry, missed the first half again. Second half was super. Thank you. Yeah, cheers, Steve. Yeah, like I said, it's we're doing we're carrying on at the moment um, on the first Wednesday of every month. Obviously, as long as hopefully we'll be able to get back into doing a live show at some point along the line. So I do know the sit clubs reopened up under a different name. So whether it will be there, who knows? But anyway, watch this space. Now, I'll be taking the bookings again as normal from midday on Sunday, people are welcome to drop me an email or con most people have spoke to me on Facebook or phone or something, they can get out with me. So anyway, if I'm to the slot, give me a shout on midday on Sunday this weekend coming. And we'll hopefully see all of you next next month. Thanks again, guys and girls. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Thank everybody. Thank Thanks, everyone. That was Thank great. You. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.